Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website. That website presents eight self-improvement lessons that I've learned from 31 years of being a professional family therapist um, and being on the planet for 70 years. During that time, I specialize in trying to understand and working with hundreds of step families of every kind in Midwestern United States and I am a step everything personally in my own life so I've come to know a good deal about step families uh, in this series of videos I want to present to you some important information that I've gained over these 31 years and in this first of two videos I want to introduce some basic facts and some terms that will serve as a foundation for the other videos in this series. Let me start by letting you know that the word step, the prefix step, as in step family, comes from the Middle English word S-T-O-E-P, don't know how that was pronounced, which apparently meant not related by blood. Still means the same thing. So that term comes to us from people over a thousand years ago in our English heritage. The form of being a step family is far more ancient. What is a step family? It is any family composed of two adults, one of whom is a biological parent. The other adult may or may not have parent, uh, children but who is providing part-time or full-time nurturance for a child or children of their mate. That new adult is a step-parent and their mate's children are their step-children. So that's a step-family. A nuclear step-family is all the adults and the kids living in one or two homes. There can be two homes because most stepkids, at least in contemporary America, come from divorced families and both their biological parents are living. Frequently, not always, the kids go back and forth from biological mom's house to biological dad's house. Mom usually gets custody, as you know. So a stepchild may have two homes and a nuclear step family then is all the adults and all the kids living in each of the two homes. Uh, an extended step family or multi-generational step family, sometimes that term is useful to describe the entire cluster of blood relatives and in-laws related to a given stepchild that can include biological grandparents, step-grandparents, biological aunts and uncles and cousins, step-aunts, uncles and cousins, um, step-siblings, and so on. It's pretty, pretty crowded, pretty big. So that's an extended step-family, multi-generational step-family. A term that is confusing to many people is blended family. That has two uses. Classically, in technical terms, a blended step family, which is also called a complex step family, is one in which the two new mates each have children from prior unions. So mom has kids, dad has kids. They are dual role adults in that each of them is a biological parent and a step parent. Blended family has another use, which is popular among people that don't like the feeling of step. Many people associate step family with second best or abnormal, weird, uh, inferior kind of a family, which is not, underline, not true. But because they don't like the feeling of saying, I'm in a step family, they try to dodge that by coming up with creative names like, oh, we're just a Blandon family, which it may or may not be true technically. There are at least 15 other 
attempts to disguise a step family uh, like combined family or co-family or bonus family. These are misleading in my biased opinion because they don't focus people on the realities of true step family life. When does a step family begin? I propose that it begins when a single parent, either after death of their mate or divorce, a single parent starts dating another adult seriously. They be, their lives start to intertwine and the new adult begins to affect the biological parent's child or children. That's the psychological beginning of a step family that may predate the legal start of a step family by some years, or the new partners may not decided to get, decide to get legally married. So that's how a step family starts. In our country recently, most step families, as I said, follow the divorce of one or both adults. A hundred years ago, step families were mostly uh, formed after the death of a spouse. Death was more common then. So just in a hundred and a few years, we have gone from step families be, being associated with death to being now predominantly associated with divorce. By the way, notice the implication of what I said about nuclear step families being in two homes. There is a good deal of confusion, at least in some places. Are ex-mates the other parent part of a new step family? If two parents split and one remarries, is their other former spouse a member of their step family? Sometimes in their wish to uh, detach themselves and distance themselves from being a step family, which is distasteful. People, the new mates, one or both of the new mates, fervently says, your ex, your ex mate is not part of our step family and never will be. The ex mate, on the other hand, may say, I want nothing to do with them. No, I'm not part of their step family. The child of both, uh, both bio parents says, yeah, I have two parents and they're both part of my family. The child is right. Whether adults want to distance ex-mates from each other or not, ex-mates inevitably have profound effects on how step families operate genetically, financially, socially, psychologically, legally, so, when you consider step families include divorced ex, both divorced ex mates. Okay. This is just a beginning of an introduction to important facts about step families. I want to continue this on a second video. So I hope you'll follow the link that you see here and pick up where we're leaving off to be continued.